Mesdames, Messieurs, Ladies and gentlemen, the Director General of the UPU, the Vice Director General of the Universal Postal Union, are coming into the room. The Director General are just entering the room. Ladies and gentlemen, le Premier ministre de la République de The Prime Minister of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire and the Minister of Communications and New Technologies are coming into the hall. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellence. Excellences, Prime Minister of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, Your Excellency Minister of the Post and Telecommunications of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire and Spokesman for the Government, Secretary General of the Universal Postal Union, colleagues, Ministers, Secretaries of State, Ambassadors, leaders of international organizations, colleagues and friends. As Vice Director General of the International Bureau of the Universal Postal Union and as the chairperson of the Committee for the Preparation of the Global Strate Strategic Conference of the Universal Postal Union, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you here in Geneva. It is important for the Universal Postal Union at the midpoint of the cycle, it is traditional to hold a meeting, an update on the strategy. This is the sixth strategy conference of the Universal Postal Union. This particular conference should have been held in the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire. Further to the decision of the Council of Administration, we are happy to host this conference here in Geneva. We are particularly proud to be able to host this conference with the um, Republic of Côte d'Ivoire. So I now call on Bruno Conet, the Minister of Posts and Telecommunication of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, the um, President of the conference, and I am delighted to hand over to him. Thank you very much. Excellencies, Prime Minister of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, ladies and gentlemen, ministers, delegates, the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire is honoured to chair this strategy conference and the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire is also honoured to be the host even though we are not in Côte d'Ivoire to host this Global Strategy Conference of the UPU. As has been announced, we are honoured by the presence of the Prime Minister of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, Mr Daniel Cablan Duncan, Duncan, and His Excellency Mr Alassane Ouattara. As the President of the conference, it will be my pleasure and it, my honour to be with you here today and tomorrow and therefore I will be very brief in my introductory remarks. I would without 
further ado, therefore, call now on Mr. Bishar Hussein, the Director General of the Universal Postal Union, to address the conference. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire, Honorable, Honorable Duncan Kablan, Your Excellency, the Minister of Post and ICT of Côte d'Ivoire, Honorable Kone, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors and High Commissions present, Heads of United Nations Agencies and other international organizations present, our esteemed CEOs of postal and regulatory organizations present, distinguished speakers, panelists, and moderators, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Salam alaikum, bonjour, and uh, jumbo. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this long awaited mid-term UPU strategy conference. We are delighted to be able to hold this important conference here in Geneva today. But of course, we very much regret that we were not able to do so in Cote d'Ivoire as originally planned. Mr. Prime Minister, I wish to express my profound gratitude to the President, to your good self, and to the government and people of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire who made every conceivable preparations to receive us in Cote d'Ivoire last year in the true spirit of African hospitality. Your Excellencies, I recall my visit to Abidjan in April 2014. I was full of optimism when Minister Kone and I jointly signed the Houston Agreement for the UPU Strategy Conference during that visit. I toured the conference venue and saw for myself the elaborate preparations that were being made to host what promised to be a very successful and memorable conference in Cote d'Ivoire. Unfortunately, my optimism was cut short by a very unfortunate circumstance that could not have been foreseen and for which Cote d'Ivoire was in no way responsible. And I had to visit your country once again in September to deliver the painful news that we could not hold the conference in Cote d'Ivoire as originally scheduled. Your Excellencies, despite that setback, the government of Cote d'Ivoire has never faltered in its resolve to deliver on its promise to host this conference. I have no doubt that this event, which will bear the name of Cote d'Ivoire, will be a resounding success regardless of the venue. I would kindly request that this August Assembly to join me in honoring Cote d'Ivoire for its leadership and dedication in bringing us together. Let us stand up and give them a big round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank you very much, thank you very much. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great personal emotion that I find myself back here in Geneva, standing here in this very same room where I had the honor of chairing the uh, 2008 UPU Congress almost seven years ago. The UPU community is once again gathered in Geneva as one of the oldest member of the United Nations family. In a few moments, we will have the honor of hearing a message from Mr. Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the United Nations, in which he expresses both his strong support for the UPU and his expectations for our union as a United Nations agency, especially in terms of delivering the development solutions 
that we all seek. Your Excellencies, we all know that UPU and the post represent very important infrastructure for the social and economic development of nations. Furthermore, as a medium for basic communication, posts provide a wide range of products and services to the citizens and businesses of the world, including facilitation of uh, financial, digital, social, and economic inclusion. No other organization, sector, or industry can do what we do. This conference brings together all the stakeholders in the postal uh, sector, including governments, regulators, designated operators, customers, the private sector, academia, and international organizations to discuss, to debate, and share knowledge and experiences with the aim of drawing up a global strategy that will propel our organization into the next cycle. This two-day strategy conference will examine the current global postal sector trends and plot the way forward. It will also provide an opportunity for us to take stock of our, our progress towards the major goals of the Doha strategy that was set uh, in 2012. Over the past two years, the UPU's International Bureau, in partnership with the various union bodies, member countries, and our valued partners and stakeholders, has made remarkable progress towards achieving all the goals programs and objectives set by the 25th UPU Congress in Doha. During our two days of discussion, we will review some of our accomplishments and assess the challenges and opportunities currently facing the post. We will listen to the voices of our customers and understand their needs. We will shed some of our old principles and embrace new ones as we move forward. By the end of these two days, we hope to crystallize a new vision that provides the foundation of the future strategy of the UPU Istanbul Congress cycle. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our strategy conference is being held at a key moment in our work cycle. Over the past two years, the Deputy Director General and I have had the opportunity to closely examine the past strategies, work plans, and programs of the UPU. We have also had the opportunity to travel across the globe to attend regional postal conferences and meet with government officials, CEOs of posts and regulators, and the private sector and customers to fully understand the business in which we operate, the challenges it presents, and various ways in which we can deal with these challenges. And over the, over the past two years, the union councils have held a number of important postal forums to discuss key aspects of our services and make important decisions for our sector and organization. We therefore believe that we are in a position to understand and advise and to keep our ship on an even keel. The program of the strategy conference is built around nine panel discussions, has been carefully prepared to enable us to gain insights from all our important stakeholders. Over the next two days, Your Excellencies, you will hear from some of the best brains on key topics that are central to our future strategy. I would like to offer my sincerest thanks in advance to all the panelists, the CEOs, the heads of postal and international organizations, regulators, and partners for their input. And I also like to recognize the ministers and the vice ministers, Secretary of State of Japan, Cote d'Ivoire, Morocco, Kenya, Hungary, Spain, and Ethiopia, who are honoring us with their presence, among many others, probably whom I have not mentioned here. We expect the speakers to bring fresh perspectives to the way the UPU operates. This is our chance to take a critical look at our organization. Nothing should be off limits, not even our governing conventions, treaties, and regulations. Let us step out of our comfort zones and test new ideas upon which we can build the future of the post. This conference is just the start of a process. The ideas that will emerge uh, will be further refined through seven regional roundtables that will take place over the next uh, couple of months. The final draft of the strategy document will then be presented to the Council of Administration later this year, 
and will undergo final examination at 2016 CS, CS session before being submitted to and endorsed by our Congress in Istanbul in 2016. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Deputy Director General and the management and staff of the International Bureau for their great efforts in organizing this conference. I also want to thank the chairman of the various councils and member countries for their input. And last but not least, I would like to thank again the eminent speakers, panelists who have agreed to share their knowledge and experience and insights with us. I look forward to our discussions and I'm confident that together we will make the UPU Strategy Conference a resounding success. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Director General, and uh, I would like to thank in you in particular for your kind words about our country, Côte d'Ivoire, distinguished delegates, the delegates have noted your message and will have the opportunity to listen to further comments today and tomorrow when we go into the analysis and discussion. Côte d'Ivoire would, of course, have preferred to welcome you on in our country, and the Prime Minister will return to this later. I would now, at this opening ceremony, like to announce what the Director General has already referred to, and I would like to now announce the intervention of the Secretary General of the United Nations, who would have wished to be with us, but unfortunately he had long-term commitments and was unable to join us. However, he wanted to address the strategy conference with a video message, which I would like now like you to listen to. If the video is ready, then it can be displayed now. Your Excellency, Mr. Daniel Kablin Duncan, Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire, Mr. Bichir Abdirahman Hussein, Director General of the Universal Postal Union. Universal Pichal. Your Excellency, Mr. Daniel Kablen Duncan, Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire, Mr. Bichar Abdimaram Hussein, Director General of the Universal Postal Union, ladies and gentlemen, this year marks the 70th anniversary of the United Nations. This gives all of the uh, members of the UN family an opportunity to focus on what more we can do to improve the lives of people everywhere. The Universal Postal Union and postal services across the world play an important role in our shared effort to build a sustainable future. Uh, postal administrations offer essential communications and logistical support. They provide important financial services and make other contributions to social advancement and human well-being. As the world shapes a new sustainable development agenda and strives to address the threat posed by climate change, postal services can and must be part of the solution. Je tiens à remercier la communauté postale mondiale d'élaborer une stratégie qui to draw up a strategy that will contribute to the establishment of a better world for all. Let us ensure that 2015 become the year of global 
action. Thank you for your commitment and initiatives and please accept my best wishes for the conference. Thank you. On behalf of everyone here, I'd like to thank Mr. Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General of the United Nations, for having taken uh, time to speak to this uh, uh, UPU meeting in spite of his very heavy agenda. I think that's a demonstration of his uh, commitment to our union and to our mission, which is um, in, uh, in order to help nations and peoples throughout the world. On behalf of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, we are now going to move to the official unveiling of the stamp uh, specially issued for this uh, World Strategy Conference, which is to the great honour of the UPU and its 192 members. I'd like to invite the Prime Minister, His Excellency. Mesdames, Messieurs. Ladies and gentlemen, in fact, this stamp shows the first post office uh, in Côte d'Ivoire. Built in 1889, and it shows how it first was, um, and then we'll show you the stamp. Um, and then we'll show you the stamp that's been issued specially for this World Strategy Conference this year. So, Prime Minister, Secretary General, you can go ahead in unveiling the stamp. So here you have the two pictures of the post office uh, as it was in 1895, just a few years after it was built, and then the post office uh, today, which has now become the museum of the Amasam town. And here's the second picture. So, Your Excellency, Prime Minister, I'd like you to, to unveil the second uh, image, which shows the post office today. So this is the stamp that's been issued uh, for this World Strategy Conference. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Prime Minister, Director General. I'd uh, invite you to go and sit down again. Thank you. Distinguished uh, delegates. I'll just wait for you to get your headphones on again. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Bishar Hussein now, who has a special announcement to make. For your announce. Well, uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's just a, just a short, short uh, uh, ceremony here. Uh, we would like to honor our uh, chief guest, the Prime Minister, uh, who has come all this way, and the government of Cote d'Ivoire. We have a, just a short, uh, 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 I mean, uh, a small gift out there. We want to unveil and give it to them as an honor from Universal Postal Union. So I have the pleasure to invite uh, His uh, Excellency, the Prime Minister, just to accept our small gift from UPU as a, 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 a symbolical a memory of the uh, 
Universal Postal Union. Your Excellency, please. Welcome, sir. Il nous a été dit que We've been told that this gift is a symbol of the recognition of the strategic role played by Côte d'Ivoire in the life of UPU and its uh, uh, unwavering commitment in uh, preparing for the strategy conference. And the Prime Minister, in a moment, will also offer a gift to the Director General. So, uh, Prime Minister, I'd invite you to offer that gift to the Director General of the UPU. Yes. Thank you. Okay. It's not so heavy, but a very small one <laughs> to the, the managing uh, Team. Merci beaucoup. This represents a mythical bird, the Sankofa bird, who's looking behind him, looking back over his shoulder, and it's, it means going back to your origins, because no future can be built without uh, having this vision of the past. And that's the symbolic meaning of this uh, uh, gift. Okay. Merci, Monsieur le Premier Ministre. Merci. Thank you, Prime Minister. DG. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we have the great honor of having with us today the Prime Minister of the host country of Côte d'Ivoire. And on all of our behalf, I have the honor and great privilege of inviting to the floor uh, His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire, Mr. Daniel Kablin Duncan. So Prime Minister, my boss, please, I invite you to take the floor and come up to the podium. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Thank you, Minister of Posts and ITC. And once again, I'd, thank, I'd like to thank the management team of UPU for this uh, lovely gift. Um, I was saying to the DG before that I will give it to our president so they can put it in his office. So next time, um, I'll be able to do that, and you'll be able to see it in his office. So thank you very much. Distinguished uh, ministers of UPU, 
members, your excellencies, uh, ambassadors, president of uh, the EPU Council, DG of uh, EPU, Secretary General of the ITU, and distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted and honoured to speak today on behalf of the President of Côte d'Ivoire, His Excellency Alassane Ouattara, at this opening ceremony of the UPU World Strategy Conference being held from the 13th to the 14th of April 2015 here in Geneva, in this lovely Swiss city. Uh, distinguished participants, I'm delighted to see so many and such high-level delegations here at this important venue for international cooperation, Geneva. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Alassane Ouattara, President of Côte d'Ivoire, would have loved to come to Geneva to participate in this opening ceremony of this important conference, but unfortunately he was unable to do that uh, because of an important uh, sub-regional meeting. And so he's given me the instructions to uh, indicate uh, his great regret uh, for not being able to come and wishing you the best of success in your work. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank, on behalf of Côte d'Ivoire and its people, the management team in UPU and indeed the whole of the world uh, postal community for the honour that they have given us uh, in um, allowing Côte d'Ivoire to host the 2015 Strategy Conference uh, under His Excellency Alassane Ouattara, President of the Côte d'Ivoire. Um, and in particular, I'd like to congratulate uh, Bishar Hussein Director General of the EPU and Mr. Pascal Cleaver, VDG, for the excellent results that they've achieved so far. Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, this conference uh, was uh, scheduled for Abidjan uh, the 14th, 15th of October 2014, as uh, we've been told earlier on. Everything had been done by Cote d'Ivoire in order to ensure that the conference was a great success in the African and Ivorian tradition. But unfortunately, for reasons outside of our control uh, and uh, in agreement uh, with the UPU, we, have decided, we decided to move the conference to Geneva. Now, this reminds me of another um, Congress uh, that was uh, scheduled for Cote d'Ivoire in 2004. And so far, no a case of uh, Ebola virus has been detected in Côte d'Ivoire. I just wanted to mention that and make that clear. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, Oufouet Boigny used to say, the founding father of Côte d'Ivoire, we never give up and we never uh, are discouraged uh, because that is why uh, we in Côte d'Ivoire and Africa remain determined. Switzerland and Geneva in particular represent uh, a whole history and a symbol. And uh, President Houphouët Boigny uh, uh, had a great deal of admiration for this lovely country, Switzerland. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Côte d'Ivoire, like many countries in the world, um, has given its strong development to sustainable, economic and inclusive social development. And uh, the ambition of Mr. Alassane Ouattara, our president, I, um, in the line of uh, set by Houphouët Boigny is to ensure that Côte d'Ivoire can be an emerging country by 2020. And that's why the post-electoral crisis in May 2011 um, gave rise to three major objectives. One, re-establishing peace and security. Two, national reconciliation and social cohesion. And third, reconstruction and economic recovery. With regard to peace and security, in just three years, the uh, index of insecurity, which measures insecurity at national level, <coughs> has gone from 3.8 in 2012 to just 1.18 in December 2014. The United Nations uh, index has gone from 4 down to 2 
and that level two is the equivalent of the city of New York or Geneva, where we are today. We've got a national reconciliation and social cohesion. The political line established by the head of state has enabled us to see a, um, improvement in the political life and all of the political activities throughout the nation, um, which means that uh, we can organize uh, transparent, free and fair elections uh, in 2015. Finally, with regard to the economy, our country has made uh, rapid and sustainable progress, which has enabled us to see strong, sustainable and inclusive economic growth with an average uh, growth rate of 9% over the past three years, one of the highest in the world. Over these past three years, uh, according to the IMF uh, report, uh, the GDP is uh, increased by 25% and uh, by 15% per capita in a context of uh, inflation of 2.6%, which is below the average of the Western economic community, which is at 3%. So, ladies and gentlemen, all of this progress has been uh, enabled because of the important sectoral and uh, structural reforms that have been carried out, ensuring that the private sector, both the domestic and uh, international, has been the main engine of growth. And this has uh, improved the attractiveness, uh, the financial attractiveness of Cote d'Ivoire for foreign and, in and international partners and investors. In particular, we've seen the adoption of a new investment code, which gives us more competitiveness, and that was in 2012. We've set up uh, businesses can be set up now within 24 hours. We have the High Good Governance Authority, which has been established. We've established a regulatory framework between the private and public sectors. We've set up uh, a court of uh, commerce in Abidjan. We've revised the uh, sectoral code of mines, uh, pet of oil and telecommunications, and ITCs. And, of course, the postal regulatory framework. These in institutional and, stru and structural reforms uh, have enabled Cote d'Ivoire to improve governance and its business environment with the following um, achievements. F for three years in a row, we've been one of uh, the best uh, places to do business in the world, according to the World Bank report. We've reached the threshold in the US Millennium Challenge uh, Corporation MCC program. Uh, we have now e e eligible since 2015 for the international Open Government Partnership Initiative. Cote d'Ivoire remains a country where the mining activity meets international standards and we, in December 2014, achieved the prize of the Mines and Money Forum of the best country in terms of reform of the mining sector and that's in front of Finland, Peru and Serbia. So, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, following this general overview, what is the specific sector of the ITCs and postal uh, networks in Cote d'Ivoire today? Well, the development of ITCs is very sustained and impressive because they, are, they represent between 7 and 8% of the uh, gross domestic product in Cote d'Ivoire. And every year, contribute from three to 400 billion uh, CFA francs to the state. Uh, with uh, uh, 22 million uh, signed up now out of a population of 23 million, which means that there is a penetration rate of 95.6%, uh, which means that this is one of the highest rates in Africa. In order to accelerate the economic and social progress, the government has now cabled uh, up uh, the national territory with the building of a fiber optic uh, network of 7,000 kilometers in distance, 2,000 kilometers uh, have now been completed. So we're trying to step up the development of many economic sectors through uh, digital uh, transformation of the Côte d'Ivoire society by using ITCs in various sectors, uh, in agriculture, uh, finance, uh, schools, health, and so on. This digital development uh, is also being seen in uh, setting up the network, uh, CDMA network, which is enabling uh, the various aspects of our administration to communicate more effectively 
between themselves, each other, and the launch of the e-citizen program, where we are trying to connect up uh, our citizens, and we're building 3,000 uh, uh, cyber centers. Uh, developing uh, ITCs uh, is very important in order to improve uh, communications. Strengthening human capacities, as they do, everyone knows, is extremely important. That's the most important thing. We set up the Superior African uh, ITC uh, University, uh, which is focusing ITCs on training. These centers of excellence will have highly qualified human resources to enable our country to move into the digital era. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the postal activity since inception has led to the establishment of both economic financial values by men and women, which has created wealth for nations. Um, Côte d'Ivoire's strategy for 2020 includes a very strong share for the postal sector and this involves two main thrusts. First of all, establishing a new postal code in Côte d'Ivoire which opens up the sector officially to um, competition with deregulation and the establishment of an equitable ecosystem for all economic players and an inclusive service for the whole of the population across the country. The second thrust is on the part of the recovery of the country with the goal of ensuring that the postal sector is a tool for development and economic and social development. This plan is going according to plan and involves the post of Côte d'Ivoire which has become um, profitable and viable. Ladies and gentlemen, you've chosen as a theme for your work contributing solutions to innovative, inclusive, integrated development. And I wish to commend you for this in order to better serve the population in the most inclusive manner possible. We have to remain watchful in a world which is constantly changing, where information and communication technology have revolutionized social standards. This technology brings new solutions which are essential for the harmonious development of mankind. Therefore, we should use this for a modern, post forward-looking postal sector, which is a vector for inclusive development. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I wish to emphasize that we all have to rise to the challenge of sustainable growth, and this involves inclusive um, global growth and trade, including Africa. We all have to rise to the challenge of the struggle against poverty and exclusion in our respective countries. We are all duty-bound to facilitate access of citizens and companies to services, and we must open up new vistas for a better world. We must emphasize that all of these challenges also represent opportunities for the postal sector. All, and therefore, we must all continue to improve the infrastructure, the functioning of the infrastructure in order to sustain the development of our countries. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, given the above challenges, rest assured that we, the government, citizens and civil society will unswervingly support your commitment to produce innovative solutions for inclusive postal development. Côte d'Ivoire wants to be one of the players for change in a world that is constantly changing and participate with UPU in the postal service of the future. And it is against this backdrop that the Côte d'Ivoire, after two missed meetings, the Congress of the UPU in 2004 and the Strategy Conference of the UPU in 2014. And as I said earlier, we, uh, being discouraged is not an Ivoirian term, the Côte d'Ivoire will be delighted to host the UPU Congress in 2020. Excellence.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates and participants, it is with this hope and with our strong encouragement for the success of your meeting that I declare on behalf of President Ouattara of Côte d'Ivoire that the Global Strategy Conference for 2015 of the Universal Postal Union is now open and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, on your behalf, I wish to extend a warm thanks to the Prime Minister for this extremely detailed speech which presents Côte d'Ivoire, the prospects for Côte d'Ivoire, and also provides specific details about the themes that will be covered during the strategy conference. Later, uh, earlier, before the speech of the Prime Minister, we were due to present a short film on the Côte d'Ivoire. Unfortunately, this was not possible for technical reasons, but I think that now the problems have been sorted out. So I am happy, Prime Minister, if you agree, to display this view of Côte d'Ivoire with this short uh, three-minute film. Welcome to Côte d'Ivoire, land of hospitality and hope, an ethnic melting pot of cultural diversity. Welcome from an amazing people, a people led by an unshakable faith in the future. Faith that leads us to take the biggest risks, face the biggest challenges, a people whose joie de vivre is the key to the vitality of its consumer society. of renewing itself and showing a strong and sustainable growth thanks to investments in its infrastructures and human capital and to the creation of new opportunities in fields such as agribusiness, renewable energy, information and communication technology, mines and hydrocarbon. to succeed in ensuring that the courageous institutional and sectoral reforms are defined in order to sustain political stability and security, in order to enhance the business climate, in order to favor the creative genius of its people and those willing to work with them in the vision. Welcome to the gate of an awakening West Africa.
Merci. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for that applause. We hope that this short f film gives you a better idea of the country that will be delighted to host you whenever you wish and that is ready in particular to host the 2020 Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, His Excellency the Prime Minister, the Director General of the UPU, the Vice DG and myself will take part in a few minutes time on your behalf in a press conference. But before that, I'm honoured to announce that Côte d'Ivoire and its Prime Minister, who is here with us, are inviting you all, and I hope that you will all accept the invitation to the reception organised by Côte d'Ivoire here at the conference centre this evening at 7pm, at 6.30 at 6 in fact, um, I believe, and we will be delighted to welcome you. I would now like to hand over to the Vice Director General who has a few announcements and after after closing um, the opening ceremony we will meet at 2 p.m. in order to begin our work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well just for the good proper running of everything, I'd like to uh, let the Prime Minister and the Director General to leave the hall. Mm -hmm. There will be a um, press meeting in room eight f for the press call. Those who have been invited to the lunch hosted by the President of the Council of Administration by Qatar, this lunch will take place on the second floor at 12.30. As the President of the Conference has just said, we will resume our work and we will get into the nitty-gritty at 2pm. Please be punctual because there are also some um, events, um, online events, and also for the moderators. So good luck and uh, bon appétit, everybody.